Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. You know, I often get people asking me how my name is pronounced. Like, is it Jago, Yago, Jargo, Iago? What is it? Well, since it's not my real name, technically there is no correct pronunciation, but I always say Jago. As in, if you follow the link in the description below and you type the code Jago, you can get 83% off a two-year plan with Surfshark, plus three months extra free. Why would you do that? Well, because Surfshark provides a very fine service, keeping you safe from online snoopers and enabling you to get around those irritating region locks on online content, and region-specific pricing when you're online shopping. Surfshark has servers all over the world, and unlike other VPNs, can be used on unlimited devices. There's even a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Well, that's that result. Next time, how you pronounce hazard. Well, like that, really. And now it's time for another of those videos where I explain railway terminology for the benefit of people who aren't massive nerds like me. Something I've come across a few times online is people asking what exactly a tank engine is. This is often followed up with some joke about hybrids of tanks and trains, which actually isn't quite so crazy as it sounds. You've probably heard the term tank engine, and likely thanks to a certain fictional locomotive. When Britt Allcroft adapted Reverend W. Audrey's stories to TV, she chose to name the adaptation after the most popular character, Thomas the Tank Engine, rather than use the more generic Railway series, which the books were published under. In 1946, when the character was first introduced to the world, steam trains were a part of everyday life, and it was reasonable to expect that kids would know what a tank engine was. In 1984, when the TV series made its debut, not so much. In recent years, the series has been renamed to Thomas and Friends, which seems to imply that they've given up on the idea that anyone would be familiar with the term tank engine. Alright, so what is a tank engine? Well, it's a type of self-contained steam locomotive. As you are probably aware, a steam locomotive requires water and fuel, usually coal, to run. The supply of coal and water is either kept on board the engine, or in a separate tender that is coupled to the locomotive. When the supply is on the locomotive, you have a tank engine. As the name implies, the water is kept in tanks. The fuel is carried in what's called a bunker. Between the tanks and the bunkers, this is all sounding very militaristic. The first tank engine was probably Novelty, one of the locomotives that competed against Stevenson's rocket in the Rain Hill Trials back in 1829. In just about every other respect, though, Novelty was a technological dead end. Tank engines are usually smaller than tender engines. Having no tender in the way, there are no visibility problems when running in reverse, so they don't have to be turned around at the end of the line. Being smaller, they tend to be lighter and able to negotiate tighter curves. The big disadvantage is that they have a shorter range before they need to refuel. There are plenty of duties that a tank engine is ideally suited to. Branch lines and light railways are perfect. The track and bridges are not so strong on those lines, and they are often built on the cheap, so they don't have space for extensive turning, coaling and water facilities. Loads are usually lighter and trains less frequent. A tank engine is the economical solution. Shunting is another use. Railways require a lot of shunting, and in steam days, even more so. Shunting, in railway terms, means the movements of rolling stock to where it's required. It doesn't make the railway any money, and rarely requires a lot of power. In a shunting yard or big station, you need good visibility. And shunting doesn't require travelling over long distances, the engine will never venture far from a coal and water supply. With the water tanks being located on the engine itself, this means that the weight of the water can improve the engine's adhesion to the rails. Some tank engines were designed purely for shunting, and so had very little space for coal. Industries in Britain almost exclusively used tank engines because their requirements were primarily for shunting. If their private line did run any distance, it was usually a feeder to a main line railway. They often had tighter curves than a main line. A well-designed tank engine could be something of a jack-of-all-trades. The Great Western Railway's 5700 class and the London, Midland and Scottish Railway's 3Fs, better known as Ginties, were perfect examples of this. 
They could shunt, but they could also haul branch line trains and keep pace with trains on the main line. They were equally suited to passenger and goods trains. And being 060s, they had an excellent power-to-weight ratio. Not all tank engines were small. A large tank engine was ideal for medium jobs like commuter trains. They could even haul express trains, provided they didn't have to go too far. For instance, the London Tilbury and South End Railway had a main line less than 40 miles long and was operated almost entirely by tank engines. There were even some big shunters. The Southern Railway's Z class was a perfect example of this type. As you can see, it has small tanks and a small wheelbase relative to its size. These were built for marshalling heavy trains around London, and for hauling them the fairly short distance between yards. Some engines had tanks and a tender, though this was quite unusual in Britain. The small and large England class on the Festiniog Railway are probably the most notable examples. Some modern heritage railways have converted engines this way, because the engines they have were designed for shorter ranges than are required today. There are different kinds of tank, but their names are usually pretty self-evident. Your standard tank engine is what we call a side tank. The tanks are, well, on the sides. The saddle tank has the water in a tank that sits on top of the boiler like, yes, a saddle. A well tank has the water slung below the boiler. The Great Western Railway was very fond of pannier tanks, which were like a halfway house between side tanks and saddle tanks giving maximum access to the fittings above and below the boiler. Rarer kinds still were box tanks, the tank is a box, and wing tanks, which were like side tanks, but at the very front of the engine for balance. I don't know why they're called wing tanks, those things don't look like wings at all. So that's a basic outline of what a tank engine is. They're not as glamorous as the big express engines, but they were an essential part of the operation of the railway network. They were, in short, really useful engines. Good evening. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do click the like button and consider subscribing for more. Maybe even be a devil and hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos as they come out. Thanks as always to my donors on Kofi and Patreon, you are the water to my tank. Thanks to my chums at Surfshark for sponsoring this video, click the link in the description below to take advantage of their generous offer, and I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.